God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Faith of the fathers, faith and prayer shall win all nations unto thee. And through the truth that comes from God, mankind shall then indeed be free. Faith of our Father's holy faith, we will be true to thee till death. Faith of our Father's we will love, both friend and foe in all our strife and preach thee to us, love knows how, by kindly deeds and virtuous life. Faith of our Father's holy faith, we will be true to thee till death. The Lord summons heaven and earth to witness his judgment on his people. The God of gods, the Lord, has spoken and summoned the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion's perfect beauty he shines. Our God comes. He keeps silence no longer. Before him fire devours. Around him tempest rages. He calls on the heavens and the earth to witness his judgment of his people. Summon before me my people, who made covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens proclaim his justice, for God himself is the judge. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord summons heaven and earth to witness his judgment on his people. Come to me in your distress, and I will save you. Listen, my people, I will speak. Israel, I will testify against you, for I am God, your God. I accuse you lay the charge before you. I find no fault with your sacrifices. Your offerings are always before me. I do not ask more bullocks from your farms, nor goats from among your herds. For I own all the beasts of the forest, beasts in their thousands on my hills. I know all the birds in the sky, All that moves in the field belongs to me. Were I hungry, I would not tell you, for I own the world and all it holds. Do you think I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Pay your sacrifice of thanksgiving to God and render him your votive offerings. Call on me in the day of distress. I will free you, and you shall honor me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come to me in your distress, and and I I will will save you. A sacrifice of praise will give me glory. But God says to the wicked, But how can you recite my commandments and take my covenant on your lips, you who despise my law and throw my words to the winds? You who see a thief and go with him, who throw in your lot with adulterers, who unbridle your mouth for evil 
and whose tongue is plotting crime. You who sit and malign your brother, and slander your own mother's son, you do this, and should I keep silence, do you think that I am like you? Mark this, you who never think of God, lest I seize you and you cannot escape. A sacrifice of thanksgiving honors me, and I will show God's salvation to the upright. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A sacrifice of praise will, will give, give me glory. We are always praying earnestly for you, that you may have a deep knowledge of God's will. From the book of Job, Job replied to his friends and said, Be silent, let me alone, that I may speak and give vent to my feelings. I will carry my flesh between my teeth and take my life in my hand. Slay me though he might, I will wait for him. I will defend my conduct before him, and this shall be my salvation, that no impious man can come into his presence. Pay careful heed to my speech, and give my statement a hearing. Behold, I have prepared my case, I know that I am in the right. If anyone can make a case against me, then I shall be silent and die. These things only do not use against me. Then from your presence I need not hide. Withdraw your hand far from me, and let not the terror of you frighten me. Then call me, and I will respond. Or let me speak first, and answer me. What are my faults and my sins? My misdeeds and my sins make known to me. Why do you hide your face, and consider me your enemy? Will you harass a wind-driven leaf, or pursue a withered straw? Or you draw up bitter indictments against me, and punish in me the faults of my youth, you put my feet in the stocks. You watch all my paths and trace out all my footsteps. Man born of woman is short-lived and full of trouble, like a flower that springs up and fades, swift as a shadow that does not abide. Upon such a one will you cast your eyes? so as to bring him into judgment before you, though he wears out like a leather bottle, like a garment that the moth has consumed. Can a man be found who is clean of defilement? There is none, however short his days. You know the number of his months. You have fixed the limit which he cannot pass. Look away from him, and let him be, while, like a hireling, he completes his day. O Lord, do not hide your face from me. Lift away from me the weight of your hand. And let not the fear of you terrify me. O God, rebuke me with gentleness and not in anger for your anger will reduce me to nothing. And let not the fear of you terrify me. From the homily at the canonization of the martyrs of Uganda by Pope St. Paul VI. The African martyrs add another page to the martyrology, the church's role of honor, an occasion both of mourning and of joy. This is a page worthy in every way to be added to the annals of that Africa of earlier times, 
which we, living in this era and being men of little faith, never expected to be repeated. In earlier times, there occurred those famous deeds so moving to the spirit of the martyrs of Scilly, of Carthage, and of that white-robed army of Utica, commemorated by St. Augustine and Prudentius, of the martyrs of Egypt, so highly praised by St. John Chrysostom, and of the martyrs of the Vandal persecution. Who would have thought that in our days we should have witnessed events as heroic and glorious? Who could have predicted to the famous African confessors and martyrs such as Cyprian, Felicity, Perpetua, and, the greatest of all, Augustine, that we would one day add names so dear to us as Charles Luanga and Matthias Molumba Kalemba and their twenty companions. Nor must we forget those members of the Anglican Church who also died for the name of Christ. These African martyrs herald the dawn of a new age. If only the mind of man might be directed not toward persecutions and religious conflicts, but toward a rebirth of Christianity and civilization. Africa has been washed by the blood of these latest martyrs, the first of this new age, and, God willing, let them be the last, although such a holocaust is precious indeed. Africa is reborn, free and independent. The infamous crime by which these young men were put to death was so unspeakable and so expressive of the times. It shows us clearly that a new people needs a moral foundation, needs new spiritual customs firmly planted to be handed down to posterity. Symbolically, this crime also reveals that a simple and rough way of life, enriched by many fine human qualities, yet enslaved by its own weakness and corruption, must give way to a more civilized life wherein the higher expectations of the mind and better social conditions prevail. We are warriors now, fighting on the battlefield of faith, and God sees all we do. The angels watch, and so does Christ. What honor and glory and joy to do battle in the presence of God and to have Christ approve our victory. Let us arm ourselves in full strength and prepare ourselves for the ultimate struggle with blameless hearts, true faith, and unyielding courage. What honor and glory and joy to do battle in the presence of God and to have Christ approve our victory. Let us pray. Father, you have made the blood of the martyrs the seed of Christians. May the witness of St. Charles and his companions and their loyalty to Christ in the face of torture inspire countless men and women to live the Christian faith. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. And give him thanks.